NBC Sports presents the games of the 24th Olympiad. Highlights of the boxing competition. The largest boxing tournament in Olympic history was contested at the Chanshil Students Gymnasium. It was a competition that supplied more than its share of fireworks, short fuses, and plenty of sparks both in and out of the ring. Temperatures continued to rise in this arena while some boxing officials and spectators helped fan the flames. NBC's Marv Albert, the fight doctor Ferdy Pacheco, and Wally Matthews tried to sort out the action in and out of the two boxing rings. Already burdened by coaching and qualifying controversy, the United States team arrived in Seoul eager to fight. First up was featherweight medal favorite Kelsey Banks, who's never at a loss for words. And uh, I can see nothing stopping me but Kelsey Banks stopping himself. And that's what that lazy attitude when you step into the ring. Uh, not really lazy attitude, but at times, you know, I get a little lazy inside the ring. Almost as Banks had predicted, his lazy attitude caught up with him in the form of a right cross from the Netherlands' Rogelio Tour. With the world champion unconscious on the mat, the United States had been dealt a devastating blow. After a night in a local hospital, Banks was all right, but his Olympic dream was all over. Another featherweight preliminary ended in a nightmare for Canada's Jamie Packendam, who pummeled his opponent from Mongolia, forcing a standing eight count early in the second round. He added a devastating knockdown later in the same round. Still in the second round, Packendam delivers another knockdown which should have stopped the fight in accordance with international boxing rules. But referee Marios Lugbo neglected to do so, and so the fight continued into the third round. Looks like he's in good shape to get there. Wait a minute. They're stopping this. The referee is signaling he's stopping this fight. Now that is bizarre. This bout should have been called at the end of the second round, and it should be a victory for Jamie Pagadam. The Canadians, of course, appealed the decision, and eventually Pagadam was awarded the bout. But it was later ruled that he had suffered too many head blows and so was not allowed to continue in the tournament. Thus another dream was stolen. Amid the early sparks of controversy, the U.S. hoped flyweight Arthur Johnson could turn the fortune of the American team around. In his opening bout, Johnson, a three-time national champion, met up with Italy's Andrea Manea. The 1987 European bronze medalist went the full three rounds with Johnson leaving the decision to the officials. Oh, big right hand, though, by Johnson as he uh, was cautioned for slapping prior uh, to that blow. The winner is on point five zero in the blue corner, Arthur Johnson, USA. A shutout for Arthur and they count right through the bell here that's two of them two more and this fight is over with johnson disposed of an opponent from nepal but next on his fight card was the korean favorite kim kwang sun very good strong solid punches by kim and johnson is not using the ring caution against johnson and Kim has taken charge. The winner is on point five zero in the blue corner. Kim, Kim Kwang Sun beat Johnson in the ring. But Korea's Ha Jong Ho didn't need to throw a single punch in a victory over his American opponent, Anthony Hemmer. Nobody can get on the bus. Okay, there's let's, my athlete right there. Listen, the let's proceed, here, let's here, proceed here. with the bouts and we'll take care of it, okay? Here's Anthony Hembrick right now walking into the arena. Let's proceed with the rest of the time. Wait, we could have been there. Do you see the schedule? What is the schedule show? It's about number 11. Now, now listen. We were coming at 10.30 wait, wait, because we had... Let me ask. 
get the kid dressed, getting ready we're to getting roll. Him, we're getting okay. him dressed. Hey. See, nevertheless, all the other uh, delegations that get boxes on ring A or B, they uh, understood this program correctly. It is something that is hard to deal with. I grabbed him and I hugged him and I said, I'm very sorry and I'll accept responsibility. Hit me, kick me, whatever you want to do, you know, but uh, uh, just something that's happening is unfortunate. Because I trained too hard and um, to see it just snatched away from me like that is a great disappointment. Han Jong Ho eventually did lose in the ring. Make the bus at 8.30, you know? Yeah, you didn't want no difficulties getting here. Welterweight Kenny Gould made it to the arena with plenty of time to spare. But for a while in his opening bout with Tanzania's Joseph Marwa, it looked like the reigning world champion was still sleeping. Only now he was in the ring. Good right hand by Marwa. That buckle Gould. Gould is getting hurt by these punches. Final seconds of the bout. And it appears that Kenny Gould has come on very effectively, at times leaping at his opponent, Marwa. And that'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now announce the winner. The winner is on point 4-1 in the blue corner. Nicknamed the Candy Man for his habit of handing out sweets to children, Gould had given a treat to his teammates. Michael Carbajal trained for Seoul in a gym his brother had built for him in the backyard of their family's Phoenix home. Michael had come too far just to lose in the preliminaries. As the luck of the draw would have it though, his first opponent was Korea's Oh Kwang Soo, about many had predicted would be for the gold. Carbajal spent the first two rounds tied up, unable to use his little hands of stone. At the end of two rounds, his brother Danny had the fight going Michael's way, but the judges were calling it even. Mike, don't let him grab you. When he holds you, your hands are loose. Work your hands. Okay, Mike, now look at me. You've got to go out there this round, and you've got to step in and work. You understand? The shoe shine is just a series of repeated blows to the midsection, and they should count. Carbajal scoring well on the inside all of a sudden. The winner is on point. 3-2 in the red corner, Michael Carbajal, USA. Carbajal had ended the hopes of one of the hometown favorites. Bantamweight Kennedy McKinney, after having won the Olympic trials, said that he was tired of losing in the finals and added that silver was going down in the market, but gold was still good. He got hit so hard that I thought it was, there he is. That is number two. And that may be it. Yeah, that's He's it. called it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. It is all over. First round knockout for Kennedy and McKinney of the United States. McKinney's first bout moved him closer to the goal. But things turned ugly when a fiercely partisan crowd saw Korea's Byun Jong Il lose a 4-1 decision to Bulgarian Alexander Ristov. It's ugly. As a result of this episode, five Korean boxing officials were suspended from the games, and the president of the Korean Boxing Federation eventually resigned. Byun set an unofficial Olympic record when he staged a 67-minute sit-down protest in the ring. Referee Keith Walker quickly left for his native New Zealand. And I have to bow out on the bout. It was a complete disaster in, in, in respect of the crowd's reaction to it. I, I, I really don't believe that I did a, did a bad job. Controversy continued with lightweight Ramalis Ellis' bout against Korea's Lee Kang Sok. The fight was delayed for almost five minutes because U.S. officials thought that one of the suspended Koreans was in Lee's corner. The rhythmic hand clapping is from the Korean section of the crowd. Now Ellis with some scoring blows. Standing eight count on a pound, on a count of one good punch. Any combination of standing eights or knockdowns adding up to three would stop the fight. And Romano Ellis has turned it around. Combination by Ellis. 
and we may see another standing eight. Yes, a second standing eight. Ramallis Ellis coming on strong in the second round. The winner is on point five zero in the red corner, Ellis Ramallis, USA. Ellis had the win, and the candy man, Kenny Gould, was back in the ring this time fighting an opponent from Ghana in hopes of advancing to the quarterfinals. The winner is on point five zero in the blue corner, Gold Kenneth, USA. The youngest member of the US team, 19-year-old Roy Jones, comes from a boxing family. His father, Roy Sr., fought professionally. Junior opened with a bang. Oh, big left hand. And that is a standing eight. It's amazing that Makalava did not go down. If that rope hadn't been there, he'd have been over about two rows back. He just jumped off his feet. What a shot. Any combination of standing eights and knockdowns adding up to three in one round, and it's all over, and Roy Jones looking to end it here in the opening round, minute and a half remaining. Just about anything he throws, he lands that left hook is landing very well as it all. Oh. And there was the left. He shortened up on it. Makalaba will not get up. That is it. A short, sweet night for Roy Jones. What a punch. Light flyweight Michael Carbajal made fast work of his second round Vietnamese opponent. here in the opening round and Don Hugh looks hurt that's that right hand that Michael Carvajal has already found gold with and that'll do it that is number three a standing eight and that is it Michael Carvajal has come up with an RSC the referee stopping the contest after some early setbacks, the Americans were on a roll. And Ellis with that strong right hand. So standing eight. Very quick standing eight. Standing eight, second time, three standing eights in one round, and the bout is over. So Ramadas Ellis has solved Kasim Traore. Traore. Traore doesn't have the punch that he had at the very beginning. These standing eights are, are really taking its toll because they, he is getting hit flush by Ellis. One more standing eight or knockdown would make four for the bout, and that also would end it. And that is it. That is number four in all, a standing eight, and Romanos Ellis has stopped Kasim Traore of Mali. Just when stability seemed to have come to boxing, the American streak was threatened, and Todd Foster's bout against Chun Jin Chul took an unexpected turn. And here's Chun with another scoring combination. We have 45 seconds remaining in the first round. These are serious punches by both boxers. Oh, that's the oh, ball! The ball went off of the other ring. The Korean Chun stopped, and Foster put him down. And we're going to have a, a wild reaction to this if it holds up. And it should hold up. There's no reason for him to stop fighting. He has counted out. There was no reason for him to stop fighting. The bell was from the other ring. He took it in the left eye, and let's see, no official indication from the uh, referee, Perjar, who is actually puzzled by it all. He's going over toward the jury, and he is looking for help. Let's take another look at that knockdown. Todd Foster. Right here, you'll hear the bell. 
And there's the bell. Oh, now watch, watch Chung. He does not go down. He's being coached to go down by his corner. There's his corner man telling him, go down like a director selling a movie star. And that, look at this act. That's, a, that's an Oscar and an Emmy and a Tony all rolled into one. Look at this. Now he has got his eye hurt. And I believe the function of him going down as far as his corner is that they want to disqualify Todd Foster on a foul. And the only way to do that is to do a dramatic act like that. Now, before I went in, Coach Adams told me, now you got the horn, you don't have the bell, so be aware of that. I was aware of that as something that you're taught when you have more than one ring. It was his fault. He stopped. I kept going and knocked him down. Really, I don't know if, it would, if he would have went down, but I think his corner told him to go down. It was a happy Thanksgiving in Korea. Here it is, see? We're boxing. I'm just starting to get loosened up here. It was, you know, going towards the end of the first round. Still waiting for the the horn. There it is. The, I, I realized I realized that it was was the horn, not the. I mean, it was the uh, bell, not the horn. So I followed up. It was his fault. He he shouldn't have been uh, doing that kind of stuff. You got to be ready and alert at all times. Right here, he is told that he would have to get back in the ring again with Chun, and so he made his way to the locker room, and uh, that would set up uh, part two of this uh, weird boxing doubleheader. So we're underway, and down goes the Korean Chun Jin Chul, Todd Foster wasting no time. Todd said, I'll take care of this in my fashion, and he started right out with a good right hand. Shot again with a scoring right hand. Remember, three scoring blows equal one point on the scorecard. Oh, bloody nose. Yes. Bloody nose by Todd Foster. He is going to have to be checked over. Wrong left hand by Foster. Had Chun buckle, but Chun able to come back. Well, his legs are spaghetti right now. And down he goes! Todd Foster set it up with the shot to the body. And then... Connected on John, it's all over. A dramatic victory. Having triumphed under the oddest of circumstances, Foster advanced to the quarterfinals where he faced Australia's Graham Chaney. It has come down to this third and final round to get to the medal situation. Winner goes to the semifinal. Todd Foster in the blue vest, Graham Chaney of Australia. Chaney putting Foster down. The winner is on points 3-2 in the red corner. Grab the 21-year-old Minnesota native was stopped one fight short of a medal. But light heavyweight Andrew Maynard, the cook in the U.S. Army, was just beginning to sizzle. minute left second round and now there is another point taken away we have that as five holding cautions against Masoa who lost who lost the point in the first round and now that's him that is it for Maynard it was another step closer to goal the winner is in the red corner Kennedy McKinney USA Kennedy McKinney's second opponent, who was from India, never even made it to the ring, which gave the American the win without ever having to throw a punch. Kenny Gould, the welterweight world champion, efficiently picked apart his Samoan opponent, Francis Masoa. Those volley of punches to the uh, midsection of Masoa, it's called a shoe shine. There it is again. American boxers use that an awful lot, and they build up a lot of points. We're down 20 seconds left in the bout. And Kenny Gould just continues to uh, outpunch uh, Francis Masola by enormous margins. 
Uh, not a thrilling fight, but once again, Kenny Gould gets the job done with his boxing skills, this time against a totally overmatched Francis Masoa. Gould easily advanced to the quarterfinals. The oldest member of the U.S. boxing team, 27-year-old Ray Mercer, an automatic rifleman stationed in Baumholder, West Germany, waited patiently for the timekeeper to show up for his opening bout. He was not as patient with his Czechoslovakian opponent, Rudolf Kavencek. Oh, a oh. nice combination by Mercer, and that leads to the standing eight. He hurt Kavencek. A standing eight being handed out to Rudolf Kavincek. Mercer looking to set up the concluder as he uh, threw the combination. And the referee Han Dong Chin of uh, Korea says it is all over. RSC. Referee stops the contest. And Ray Mercer has stopped Rudolf Kavincek. The colorful U.S. super heavyweight Riddick Bo hails from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, barely four blocks from where Mike Tyson grew up. Bo, who has often predicted his own boxing glory, was finally making his Olympic debut against Austria's Biko Butawamangu. Coach Johnson told him, listen, you're going to sleep out there. Keep that jab, jab popping and try to cross the right and wake up. It has been an ugly bout. Two guys leaning on each other and committing fouls, but down goes Oliver Mongo. Riddick Bo just walks away. It's all it's over. Strange. He can't get up. Here comes the doctor. He's trying to get up. They should let him stay down until he's ready. There's too big a man to pull him up. Just let him lay there. Nope, they're pulling him up. That's really silly. That's the first silly thing I've seen an Olympic boxer, uh, doctor do. Look at that. The guy can barely walk, and they've got him up. That is silly. As we come up to a half minute, remaining second round, and another good one for Roy Jones of the United States. Oh, oh a big left hand by Jones, and that's another standing eight. Second standing eight. hook was a glancing blow and another left hook from Jones. There's such a difference in class in these two fighters. This is like watching a Porsche racing a Volkswagen. I mean, he is so classy. The winner is on point 5-0 in the blue corner, Roy Jones, USA. Roy Jones advancing to the quarterfinals in the light middleweight division. Jones' teammate, Michael Carbajal, had already advanced to his quarterfinal bout against Canada's Scott Olson. Strong right hand followed by the left, delivered by Michael Carbajal. Now Carbajal's in action. Now he's in gear. As, he, as Olsen came in, he'd been having his way. All of a sudden, he met a blizzard of counter punches, all of them landing, all of them scoring punches. Ooh, nice right hand by Carbajal. And Olsen right back, but not able to connect. And a caution called by the referee Guidon against Carbajal for hitting down low, connecting below the waist. And this will be a very uh, difficult bout to score. And the chant of USA. Now Olsen looking to end, looking to finish big, pulling his way toward Carbajal, but not connecting with 10 seconds remaining in the bout. Nice combination. That a scoring combination by Carbajal. Olsen coming back. And this is all over as they go to the medal round. The winner is on point 5-0 in the red corner, Michael Carbajal, USA. Carbajal was now two bouts away from a gold medal. Lightweight Ramalas Ellis still had three to go. Good combination by Ellis. 
Ellis the southpaw going against Emil Kuprinsky, who has been able to score with combinations of his own. Right hand by Kuprinsky that was on target. And a strong combination by Ellis that shook Kuprinsky. Caught him coming in and shook him back on his heels. Ellis now chasing Kuprinsky. And there is a check for the bloody nose of uh, Kuprinsky, the referee, Huad El Arbi of Morocco, calling for the uh, timeout. Ellis staggered back with the right hand, but came right back. He just was rocked with, uh, back on his heels. He's just trying to throw too many punches to overwhelm Jabrinsky. Jabrinsky waiting his chance. Halfway through, final round. If Ellis can weather that right hand, it's, it's, it will be a considerable achievement because he's getting hit right on the chin with the right hand over and over and over again. The winner is all points 3-2 in the red corner, Romanis Ellis, USA. With yet another American assured of at least a bronze, Andrew Maynard looked to join Carbajal and Ellis in the semis. Once again, Maynard flashing that left hook successfully as we come up to a minute oh. and a half remaining in the bout, and Eros was hurt by that uppercut. What an uppercut by Maynard. Eros looking to hold as Maynard turns him around. Maynard turning him, giving him angles, punching from the angles, doing everything right. A caution on Maynard for hitting down low. Look out. And that's a sign of how tired Eros is. The winner is on points 5-0 in the blue corner, Andrew Maynard from USA. Maynard was in for a medal. And his coach, Ken Adams, was confident that teammate Kennedy McKinney would join the American semifinals. Well, Kennedy McKinney, I think he would be one of the guys we look for, I think, at this point in time. Really look sharp. I think he's right because I've been with him for the last few years and he knows what my abilities are and he knows the, my state of mind. I'm, I came here to win a gold medal. McKinney of the United States in the white. Wemba of Kenya in the Red Trunks. And this is the uh, best exchange we've seen. The only exchange we've seen. That's the first hard fighting done by both fighters. As Mawimba caught McKinney in a corner, he thought he'd take advantage of it, and they got into a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, of which I believe Kennedy got the advantage. Winner is on points by zero. McKinney lived up to expectations. The next American to continue the medal march was Kenny Gould. These are the Olympics, and this is the style that you need to win this thing. Gould's got the style to go for gold, and that's what we're here for. And Gould connecting with the combination with a half minute left in this final round. The winner is on point 5-0 in the red corner, Gold Kenneth, USA. Gould was one fight from the final, while heavyweight Ray Mercer was only one step behind. Coming up 10 seconds left in this first round. Already a bloody nose from Gaudiano as he's taking those shots right on the nose. Oh, down goes Gaudiano. The bell does not save the uh, the boxer, so he gets the count. The knockdown occurring at the bell. He took a good shot. Oh, it's That's over. It, it is it. all over. A first round knockout by Ray Mercer. Mercer was the sixth American to advance to the semifinals. Super heavyweight Riddick Bowe looked to join him.
The moves of Roy Jones in the ring reminded many of 76 gold medalist Sugar Ray Leonard. Ooh, nice oh, mark. White hand in, and blood is flowing from the nose of Zaitsev. That strong right hand by Jones, and a spurt of blood came out. He seems to have found the target. <laughs> In the red corner, Roy Jones. Michael Carbajal was the first American to fight in the semis. The winner gets to the final to battle it out for the goal. And we have come down to the end of the bout. Robert Issacheki of Hungary. Michael Carbajal, who connected with the right hand out of Phoenix, Arizona. And now it goes to the judges. The winner is on points 4-1. In the red corner, Michael Carbajal from USA. Kennedy McKinney was next. Just past the halfway point, round one. Kennedy McKinney started it off with the combination. He hurts Mulesad of Thailand. Another strong combination, right hand right down the button. McKinney is cooking, and down goes Mulesad. What am I saying? You're throwing one damn bunch at him. What's wrong? If you don't want to fight, I can stop it. Well, no, but I'm gonna just what I'm gonna do. You go out of this round and play around and see if I don't. Mm -hmm. See it. In his semi, Romales Ellis seemed lackluster in the ring. been going so well in these Olympic Games has been eliminated. Oh, but Mercer faking uh, with the left and going with the right and that'll do it. It's all over. It is all over. Ray Mercer with a powerful performance. By the way, he doesn't even want to go anymore. Ray Mercer celebrates. <laughs> Making his way to the gold medal round. That night, three more Americans, Roy Jones, Andrew Maynard, and Riddick Bowe, tried to move into the finals. Oh, big right hand. But Woodall, right back. And Jones, able to come through with a flurry as this uh, third round comes to a conclusion. Another caution for a hole. That's the fifth caution, but he has not taken a point away. Oh, now a foul. Standing oh, eight. Standing eight being uh, issued. It appeared at first that uh, Heinrich Petrich was indicating a low blow, but it's a standing eight. Apparently, uh, Coach Kenny Adams told the referee about the cautions. I'm not certain if that is what the discussion is about. Is he quitting? Is he quitting? Yes, he's quitting. Yes, he is quitting. Go over. And he's won. What a most unusual bout. Apparently, the body shots got to Heinrich Petrich, and in the translation, the referee, Bisbal of Argentina, and uh, the Polish corner could not get that point across that he was throwing the towel in. And so this bout is over. And Bo went to sleep again. He's been asleep now for about a minute. The attention span was there at the start, and Bo is hurt. Took a hard body shot. And his corner says, go right back. One, two, three to the head. Don't hit the back, hit the head, they say. Now his body attack of Riddick is causing the Soviet a lot of trouble. What a turnaround by Riddick Bo. Taking a standing eight. Twelve American boxers came to Seoul with dreams of gold. After a troubled beginning, six had advanced to the finals. With his family in Phoenix watching, Carbajal faced Bulgaria's Ivalio Ristov for the gold. Oh, 
again. Kristoff able to land with the right. Carvajal has slowed down a little bit, and I don't know why, because this is this is the minute that impresses. This is the minute that sometimes wins you the goal. So it's up to Michael Carvajal to get in gear and be a punching machine here. 1.50 in the blue corner. Ivalio Ristoff from And it is Ivalio Ristoff of Bulgaria taking the gold. Though sloppy and erratic in his performance, Bo was awfully powerful. He calls his right hand a nuclear warhead, but he bombed in his gold medal bout. Another standing eight. I can't believe this. The fight is over. Justin Baumgart of East Germany says it is all over. And Roy Jones has opened up in strong fashion against Park Sihar. Second round, and Jones caught Park with a counter. And another left hook, although the crowd reacted to the right by Park that uh, grazed Jones. A standing and, eight. Yes, a standing eight being handed out to Park Sihar. That's all he needs to do is volley and step back. Leave your calling card and take off right there. Ooh. And that was an emphatic calling card. He had Park staggered. I don't know what they're waiting for. That's not a standing eight. I don't know what is. Roy Jones building up a tremendous lead and should be 15 seconds away from the goal. Count it down. We're down to 10 seconds. Roy Jones seeking the gold medal. Final seconds of the bout. Referee Aldo Leone breaks the boxers, and that will do it. It is all over. Well, if he doesn't win the goal off this, then I think there's something rotten in Korea because that is absolutely one of the most dominant things I've seen. The winner is on point three two in the blue corner. Was there any doubt in your mind that you had won the fight? No, there was no doubt at all. I knew I had won the fight. I won all three rounds. What about when you heard that the decision was 3-2? Nothing I can do about that, you know. Uh, I think I go home, go to school, you know. I don't know if I'll box or do whatever. To me, I'm going to go with medals. To the United States, I'm going to go with medals. The Jones fight wasn't Park C. Hun's only controversial win at these games. Four days earlier, he won a 3-2 decision over Italy's Vincenzo Nardiello, who had a more violent reaction than Jones. There was an interesting postscript to all the controversy. The International Amateur Boxing Association named Jones the outstanding fighter in the Olympics. Despite two weeks of controversy, there was Olympic glory for some Americans. It is McKinney in the blue and Ristoff in the black. Kennedy McKinney has had a... Oh, and down goes Ristoff! Kennedy McKinney who has had a most impressive performance in his path to what he hopes will be the goal. Puts down Alexander Ristoff in round one and now looking to go for the knockout. That is a standing eight as McKinney again accelerated the attack. That is two now for the bout. The chant of USA counted down to the first gold medal for the United States. Final seconds of the bout. And Kennedy McKinney will come away with the goal. A former truck driver in the Army, McKinney stood atop the medal stand as the first American to win the Bantamweight division in 84 years. Andrew Maynard looked to join Muhammad Ali and Leon Spinks as Olympic light heavyweight champs. And Maynard going to the body here in round number one. Those are all scoring shots by Maynard to the body because he's digging into that target area, he's hitting with the white of the glove, and he's throwing hard punches. 
Now we're down to 20 seconds remaining in the bout. They have now moved the act to the ropes. Oh, good right hand by Maynard. Final seconds, and we will go to another difficult decision. The winner is on point five zero in the red corner, Andrew Maynard. Well, the United States pulls it out. Andrew Maynard has won the gold. Ray Mercer made sure the judges would have no say in his final against Korea's Baek Hyun Ma. That called against Baek, a caution for ducking below the waist. Mercer off the mark by just a half an inch. If he gets that a little bit longer, it's going to start bouncing off the jaw of Baek. Coming up on a minute remaining. In this first round, they're battling for the gold medal in the heavyweight bracket. Mercer of the United States in the white. Bank of Korea is put down! Mercer caught him! Here's the count! Bank is hurt badly! He, he shouldn't go on. He should not go on. He stopped it. It's all over! Ray Mercer has won the gold with a first round knockout of Bank Kyun Ma! of Korea. Look at the enthusiasm of Mercer. He has gone wild. Gold medalist and Olympic champion, Ray Mercer, USA. After a shaky start, U.S. boxers won three goals, three silvers, and two bronze medals.